Let me walk you through how I diagnose this easy go 48 volt electric golf cart. The first thing is when I turn the key on, boom, and I went, tried to go forward or reverse, I um, would get no backup alarm or no real noise, and then I would push the gas pedal, just no movement, like almost like the batteries were dead. And so, um, a couple of the things I would recommend you do is get yourself a good digital voltmeter and go ahead and check the battery voltage and this one by the way if you pop the seat off you can see the model number back under here this one being a TXTE 48 volt and then the date code um, if you need it so basically kind of just get an idea that this is what you have and then take the seat off you can see there's six batteries um, I thought that they would be six volts but they're eight volts a piece and so if there's um, six batteries of 8 volts a piece you're going to be looking at 48s if they're 48 volts they're all wired in series so you would land your negative terminal of your meter um, here and then your positive here kind of where all the wires come together and that that should be a full 48 volts or so if it's charged so i did that and um still still no good next thing you know you could check this uh toe or run switch and um, a couple ways you could check that. I won't say how to check everything. I want to really focus on what was wrong, but I pulled this cover off. I checked the switch for resistance. It was pretty low, you know, like point, point zero 0.02 ohms or so. So I verified this switch was good. Um, I verified that this switch was good. I verified that this switch was good. I verified all these switches, and then I also found out the gas pedal... Um, has a potentiometer, but it also has a switch that when you give it a certain amount of gas, it'll close the switch. All these things have to be closed, 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 so that basically if you look at this solenoid here, if all those items end up completed, you should end up with um, 12 volts here, or sorry, 48 volts here, and a good ground, a zero volt here, and that would be um, when you when you do everything to get it running. So key on, key on, key on. Press the pedal. You should get uh, 48 volts and zero volts. At that point, it should click, and I can show you what clicking sounds like. Because now I just recently got it fixed, so I'm gonna do key on forward, and I'm gonna press the gas pedal just real lightly so you can hear it. Oop, forgot. Put it in run. So that that right there is the click. If you're not getting that click, basically to explain, and I just turned it off, so that's why it clicked again. You've got your full 48 volts coming down on this wire here, this big old, big old heavy blue wire. That goes to this side of the solenoid. You can see it's got a lug right there. That big 48 volts does not go to this solenoid. It's open internally until you get 12, uh, 48 volts here, 0 volts here. That will lift the solenoid. Click, and it will connect the battery voltage to this terminal, which actually goes into the controller, and that's ultimately what ends up going to the traction motor in the back. So you're troubleshooting this solenoid. It's probably driving you crazy. If you have everything I mentioned, 48 volts on the big terminal, uh, 48 volts here on this small terminal, and a good ground here, and it's not working, well then your solenoid's bad. But what I was getting was 48 volts, and this is all with the key on and the pedal depressed, so be careful, you wanna have it on jack stands so that it doesn't drive away on you. Um, I was getting 48 volts here, 48 volts here, but I couldn't get ground on this one. And I tracked it back, and this little blue wire here uh, goes to the controller and the controller supplies ground when the conditions are met so after a bunch of research this is why I'm saving you the time I found that all these different items need to be working to basically um, give you get, have that controller give ground now the particular problem this one had is over here this charging port has this receptacle and basically it thinks at this time that there's still a charger plugged in. Now, there's a whole bunch of tests I did to do that, but I'll show you the down and the dirty. The down and dirty being um, 
if you look back here, you can see you've got a rather large red wire, and that's your uh, basically the real positive for charging the batteries. You've got this big black wire, and that's basically the negative. Then you have this kind of bundled series right here of wires, and that's actually just to illuminate the LED that tells you whether it's charged or not. Then this blue wire might throw you off. This blue wire basically will have zero volts if the charger's plugged in. If you disconnect it, it should have a full 48 volts. So you could disconnect this, and you could check with it disconnected with your digital voltmeter or similar. Place the red lead in here carefully, and then place your black lead on your ground right here. You should be getting 48 volts, but I was getting zero volts, so it proved to me that it was thinking that it was um, still plugged in. So the way you could really triple check it, I'll show you how to do that real quick. So now I'm over here on this side of the cart. I basically got myself just a little wire, and I kind of like wadded the end up, kind of curled it over, and these couple ports, this is your positive here. So what I basically did, now that it, with it kind of wadded up, I just real carefully kind of inserted it so I could get some tension, because it's kind of a big terminal, right? I inserted it there, and then on the other end, I took this end of it, and I basically inserted it very carefully into the orange side, right in here, into the orange side of that blue circuit. So at that time, right there, that would get my solenoid to click. So jumper from here to here. If you don't like that, you can jumper from here, 48 volts, to here. If that fixes your problem, you have a bad uh, charge port. It's basically, this is an interlock. If it thinks that it's plugged in, it sends a signal to the controller and it won't lift the solenoid. You get nothing. So I talked to this guy, he uses this truck, it's like a ranch vehicle, and I said, hey, you need a charging port, but you know what, if you want, I can jumper it for you. So the way that I jumpered it, you can see, pulled this cover, I traced this wire. That wire looks orange, but as I found out, it's actually orange with a little red tracer, little red stripe there. And I traced it all the way down here. I popped open this little uh, conduit to give you some reference. This is where we're at. I popped open that little conduit and I basically grabbed that orange with red tracer stripe. I cut it. I taped the dead end up in here. And then I took the end that comes ultimately from the controller. I put a little eyelet on it here, as you can see in blue, and I attached it to this side of the solenoid. So that means instantly when I do key on, 48 volts gets sent to this side of the solenoid, which is then going to send its 48 volts to this wire, which is then going to trigger the controller to say, okay, cool, no chargers plugged in. Now I'll verify it works. I just finished it um, right now. So we're going to do run, forward, key on. And then as I press this gas pedal, you'll hear it. It clicks, and then you can see it moving here. So it's totally fixed. It cost practically zero dollars. Now the negative. If somebody, you know, like if this was not a work truck or vehicle uh, and this was going to be used on a golf course or you got kids and stuff, I wouldn't do it because if you have this charging receptacle plugged in, somebody hops in, boom, they put it forward, they're going to drive off, they're going to rip that thing out, they're going to rip it out of the wall or something. But right now, it's just, it's, it's, it's bypassed. So truth be told, it's probably not the safest way, but it can at least help you troubleshoot it or if you really need to get it fixed, go ahead and do what I did over there. So hopefully that helps you. It took me a little while to figure it out.